Hello and welcome to Movie Night. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. I've always subscribed to the mantra that YouTubers should make content, not excuses. So rather than waste time explaining why I haven't posted anything on this channel in 52 days, let's just jump right into tonight's first and only review for Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. I've got a different feeling about this. The first spin-off installment of the Star Wars film franchise was released worldwide on December 16th, 2016, and as expected earned at least four times its large $200 million budget. Right from the opening shot, which forgoes the use of the series' famous text crawl, it's obvious this PG-13 rated space opera is going to be a different brand of Star Wars. And while that approach gives way to a darker and more unique experience, it isn't always for the best. Directed by Gareth Edwards, the 134-minute feature shares the heretofore unseen story of how the Rebel Alliance stole the plans for the Death Star, which obviously directly sets up the iconic original film from 1977. Plus, one critical plot point involving that giant superweapon's weakness is finally and cleverly addressed here with a believable retcon. Leading our band of scrappy heroes in a battle is Felicity Jones as a reluctant outsider forced to help for personal reasons. The beautiful 32-year-old brings a certain spitfire attitude and brave confidence to the role, which is crucial as she's basically the only female in the entire cast. Inspiring her troops before a seemingly impossible mission, she reminds everyone, we have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Alongside her as somewhat untrustworthy allies are Diego Luna, Riz Ahmed, Donnie Yen, Yang Wen, and Alan Tudyk. And while Luna and Ahmed looked way too similar for my liking, Tudyk's portrayal of the sarcastic droid K2SO injected some excellent laughs into the otherwise dark script. The supporting cast also includes fantastic work from Ben Mendelsohn as an uncompromising Imperial officer, Forrest Whitaker as a mysterious Clone War veteran, and Mads Mikkelsen as Jones' long-lost father. These characters are all well portrayed and interesting, but they're not developed enough to really become invested in. Oh, Halleck! Leanna Halleck! Huh. You wanna get out of here? Hey! Move at me! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you are being rescued. Please do not resist. With at least a dozen cameos and callbacks to A New Hope, longtime fans will undoubtedly be pleased with Rogue One's integration into the classic mythos, which effectively strengthens what came before. In some respects, however, Edwards went too far. The heavy use of the Grand Moff Tarkin character was a foolish mistake. Computer trickery and body double Guy Henry are used to resurrect the lightness of the late Peter Cushing, but the result never escapes the uncanny valley. Much like Paul Walker's inclusion in Furious 7, this digital zombie needed more work to truly convince audiences they're watching an actor who died in 1994. Moreover, his inclusion was almost entirely unnecessary, as his duties could and should have been divided amongst Mendelssohn's new villain and Darth Vader's few appearances, who was voiced once again by the iconic James Earl Jones. And damn, he was legit scary in this picture. The menacing fury that he unleashes during a climactic moment is worth the price of admission alone, and something only hinted at in previous installments. On that same note, the movie predictably ends with another familiar character, but their rubbery-looking CGI facelift completely distracts from what is otherwise a beautifully poignant setup for Episode 4. And it's an easy fix, too, just don't have the character turn around. Complaining about the visual authenticity of a cameo like this may sound like a minor gripe, but it's akin to seeing an ugly plumber's crack at the next table over while you're eating at a nice restaurant. Sure, the quality of the meal itself is unchanged, but it's an unpleasant distraction that really dampens your experience. Those glaring mistakes aside, the visual effects by Industrial Light and Magic are absolutely astonishing. The camera work balances handheld excitement during intense firefights with steadier wide shots that showcase the entire battlefield. Plus, there are some fixed perspective shots mounted to the side of an X-Wing during a dogfight that are especially cool. Whether it's the tropical beaches of Scarif, the foggy rain of Idu, or the gritty bustle of the rebel base on Yavin 4, Rogue One does a wonderful job of creating and recreating the faithful Star Wars universe we all know and love. I'll be honest though, the picture took a while to really grab my attention. Perhaps it's because The Amazing Force Awakens is still so fresh in my mind, but Rogue One didn't really capture that same magic or hype I felt with previous Star Wars entries. It's a feeling I can't really describe other than to say the movie impressed me, but never gave me goosebumps. With reports suggesting as much as 40% needed to be reshot, some alterations are to be expected, but nearly everything I enjoyed in the trailers, and I do mean everything, was omitted from the final product. It's an unfortunate reality of studio-controlled blockbusters, but a disappointment worth mentioning just the same. 
but what wasn't a disappointment is the entire final act of the film, a phenomenal realization of exciting fantasy action, from aerial battles to an at, -AT beach siege to a tense break-in of an Imperial data facility. These intertwined narratives definitely rise to a powerful conclusion. With this being the first movie in the franchise not scored by John Williams, there's honestly no one I'd rather have replace him than Michael Giacchino, who does excellent work blending familiar leitmotifs into a new and vibrant sound. With more on-screen character deaths than the rest of the saga combined, it's clear this is not the same Star Wars I grew up with. But there's a lot of fantastic action and fan service here that makes it necessary viewing for a slightly older crowd. Despite stumbles in the beginning and lack of character development, this is a supremely fun time that functions as a perfect prequel. I felt Rogue One A Star Wars Story was a great, if flawed, film that pairs well with its predecessors. That does it for this episode, but I'll be back after Christmas with my annual retrospective looking at the best and worst movies of 2016. Until then, though, make sure to check out my letterbox profile, link in the description, for a collection of the 20 plus reviews I've published since Thanksgiving. Or you can click this information icon to watch my other Star Wars reviews. My name is Jonathan, thanks for watching, and have a good movie night.